Shalom, and welcome to Via Hafta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. Hanukkah Semeach Lekulam, which means Happy Hanukkah to all. Well, this is our special Hanukkah program, and some of you may be saying to yourself, wait a second, Hanukkah, it's a Jewish holiday. It's for those that follow Judaism. Why are we studying about Hanukkah today? Well, one of the things that you need to know is this. When we talk about Hanukkah, it's mentioned in the New Testament, in the book of John and chapter 10. And we find there that Yeshua himself, he went up specifically to Jerusalem to observe this important holiday. Now, all too often people think that Hanukkah only speaks about something that happened in the past. But if you understand scripture and you understand the testimony of one prophet in particular, Haggai, you will know that Hanukkah points to the future. It points to a proper understanding of the transition from this age into the kingdom of God. So what we're going to do today is to study for a few minutes about Hanukkah from a biblical perspective. Now, frequently people think Hanukkah, it's about that little flask of oil, only enough for one day and it lasted eight days. Well, that's true. And eight, and we'll talk about this in a moment, is a very important number. The sages tell us that eight is a kingdom number. It represents newness. It represents many things surrounding redemption. For example, circumcision was on the eighth day. And in that eighth day, that covenant was established. What's circumcision about? It is about the death. It is about the death of the flesh. So many things that relate to the kingdom of God can be seen in the number eight. Well, look with me if you would. We're going to be in three primary locations today in our study. Look with me, if you would, to the book of Haggai and chapter 1. The book of Haggai and chapter 1. Now, what we're going to see is this. This prophecy took place approximately 300 years, a little bit more than that, before the event of Hanukkah. And as I said, many people think Hanukkah is just about that oil that lasted eight days instead of one when they put it into the menorah, that, that lampstand that represents the glory of God. But really, the miracle of Hanukkah was not so much the oil, but what that miracle of the oil pointed to, and that was the bigger miracle of Hanukkah. And what was that? Israel's defeat of her enemy. The Greek empire that ruled over much of the world, it was powerful. It destroyed everywhere. But lo and behold, because of one family, the Maccabean family, a priestly family who trusted God because of them, what do we see? Victory. So I want you to see that there's a connection between Hanukkah and victory and the establishment of the kingdom. Now, when we look at the book of Haggai, we see something. This prophecy begins in the second year of Dariavesh, or Darius, the king. And why in the second year? Well, the number two in the Bible speaks of two divergent opinions. And what do we see here? Two opinions. God is saying the time is at hand to build the temple. Understand, the emphasis of Haggai is on that temple being built. But the people, they have a different opinion. They say, and you can read this in the first chapter, they're saying, you know, it's not the time to build the temple. We're going to build and we've already have ourselves beautiful homes. But the temple, well, that's for another time. Well, that is not God's mindset. 
Now, also we see something else in this first verse. It comes in the second year of King Daryavash. About what I want you to see is in the sixth month. And if you know anything about the sixth month in Judaism, the month of Elul, that month is set aside for repentance. So you see what's going on here. The people have their opinion. It's not the time to build a temple. And God says, you need to change. You need to repent and embrace my opinion, my truth. Now, if you drop down, you see something else. If you look at verse 12 and verse 14 in Haggai chapter 1, you'll find that there's an emphasis on the remnant of the people. And we talked in our study of the book of Revelation, chapter 11, that there's an emphasis on that sharit, the remnant of the people. The Jewish sages say, when the word remnant appears in Scripture, we need to be thinking about the last days and those individuals of the house of Israel that will be brought to repentance and embrace the truth of the gospel and receive life eternal and life in that kingdom. So there's an emphasis on that remnant. Well, let's go into chapter 2. In chapter 2, we see a date given. And that's important because, well, let me share with you this. The name Haggai in Hebrew means my festivals. Well, if the name of the prophecy is my festivals, we need to be asking ourselves, what festivals are we talking about? And we have the first answer right here in chapter 2 in verse 1. Look at it, please. It says, in the seventh month and the 21st day of the month. Now, what does that mean to you? See, dates are important. God's timetable, his calendar, biblical calendar is important. Things happen on time with God. And the 21st day of the seventh month is a festival day. It's the last day of the Feast of Sukkot or the Feast of Tabernacles. And by the way, prophetically speaking, I'm talking about the biblical prophets. They see a significance with the kingdom of God and the Feast of Tabernacles. So it's the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles. And that is known as Hoshana Rabbah. It is also mentioned in John chapter 7 as well. When Yeshua was in the temple and he did a great, great message saying, anyone who's thirsty, let him come unto me. So Hoshana Rabbah, meaning the great salvation. So what I want you to see is this. Chapter 1, what's the theme? Repentance. What does repentance lead to? If it's biblically based, it leads to a great salvation. Now, notice something else here. We saw in verses 12 and 14 of chapter 1, the emphasis on that remnant. And likewise here, we see in verse 2 of chapter 2, there's an emphasis on the remnant of his people. What does that mean? We need to think last days. Read on into verse 3. There's an emphasis upon this house. Now remember, what is God saying? You need to build my house. You need to establish it. Because in the days of Haggai, it had been destroyed by the Babylonians and it laid in ruins. So God's saying, build this house. And it's related to the glory that's going to be manifested through this house. What house? Well, he says, remember the first one? Then he starts talking about the second one. But I want you to see something. Drop down, if you would, to verse 6. Chapter 2 and verse 6. For thus said the Lord of hosts. In a little while, he says, I am going to shake. And it's the same word for an earthquake. I am going to shake the heavens and the earth. He is going to do something that should cause all the world to take notice. And what is that? We'll keep reading. He says, I'm going to shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I'm going to shake all the nations and they're going to do something. They are going to bring their desirable things where? To the house of God. What house? Well, if you drop down to verse 8, he's talking about how the glory of, of the latter house is going to be greater than the first one. Now, we know something. If we're talking about the second temple, the second temple was not as glorious as the first one, Solomon's temple. But this is what, what it's referring to here. This changes everything. 
Because here, Haggai is talking about the final temple, the last temple is going to be glorious. So it's another indication that we're talking about the last days, the establishment of the kingdom. Drop down now to verse 10. Now, remember, we've already talked about one holiday, the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles or Sukkot, Hoshana Rabbah. Now we're going to find the second festival that the name Haggai speaks to when he says, my festivals. Look, if you would, to verse 10. On the 24th day of the ninth month. Well, the ninth month is the Hebrew month, Kislev. The 24th day is, when that is over, Hanukkah begins on the 25th. It's Erev Hanukkah. It's where the preparations are made. It's where the victory took place for the Jewish people. It is what brought about the celebration and the rededication of the temple of God. And what do we find here? It's on the 24th day of this ninth month. Now, what you see, if you read all the remaining verses in chapter 2, you're going to see that there's an emphasis over and over and over on the 24th day of the ninth month. Why do I say that? Well, look, if you would, to verse 15. He says, now pay attention, set your heart on this day and further. What day are we talking about? Well, look, if you would, to, to chapter 2 once more and verse 18. He says that same thing. Set your hearts on this day and forward from what day? From the 24th day of the ninth month. And what took place? Well, if you read all of that verse, verse 18, it's the day that the foundation of the temple was laid, the second temple. It was established. And what happened? Once they founded the temple, they celebrated that God was going to complete the good work that he started. Now, that was on Erev Hanukkah 300 and more years before the actual Hanukkah took place at the time of Antiochus Epiphanes and the Maccabean family. This all foreshadows a victory. Well, look now to verse 20. And the word of the Lord came about a second time to Haggai on what day? Over and over it says, on the 24th day of the ninth month. And what's God going to do? He says, for I spoke to Zerubbabel, the governor of Judah, and I'm going to shake the heavens and the earth. And what's going to happen? Well, if you keep reading here, God is going to bring about judgment. He is going to judge the nations. He is going to do something, he says. Look, if you would, to verse 23. On that day, says the Lord of hosts, I am going to take Zerubbabel, the son of Shatiel, meaning to ask God. My servant declares the Lord, and I'm going to set him as a seal. For in you I have chosen. Who's in you? In the Jewish people. I have chosen, says the Lord. Now, what he's talking about here is a depiction. All scholars, both Jewish scholars and Christian scholars, say that Zerubbabel is a typology for Messiah. He's called elsewhere that branch, which also Messiah is known from. So what he's promising in Haggai is that there's going to be a final temple. And that temple, that temple is going to be established and give birth to the kingdom of God. And that temple is going to be prepared for the, the covetousness. And that word covetousness can be in a positive sense, the desire of the nations. See, the term, the desire of the nations in Hebrew has to do with Messiah. So what do we learn from the Jewish sages? We learn this. Hanukkah, how many days is it? Eight days. Now, we know something. We know according to Jewish tradition, there are three times that we should have a heightened expectation for the coming of Messiah. One is the eight days of Passover. Remember, Passover, one day, the 14th day, and then seven days of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. One plus seven, eight. Also on the Feast of Tabernacles, how many days is the Feast of Tabernacles? Seven days, but there's an additional holiday immediately thereafter called Shemini Yetzirah, which means the eighth day assembly. Eight is so important. And the next time that we should think of Hanukkah or the time that we should think of Messiah is during the eight days of Hanukkah. Why? 
Because what we see in Haggai, there is that expectation that God chose Zerubbabel to be the leader of Jerusalem. Once the temple was founded, the second temple, so too is he going to make known his choice, who the Messiah is, having to do with what? Hanukkah. Why do I say that? Well, let's look at another passage of Scripture. Turn, if you would, to the book of Daniel, the book of Daniel and chapter 12. Now, if you've been following along, you know that Daniel is a, a prophecy having a lot to do with the last days. And we know that Daniel chapter 12, well, it's a chapter all given over to the last days. And notice what it says here. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 11. It says, from the time that the daily sacrifice is removed and the abomination of desolation is set up. Now, we know something. We talked about that there's going to be a third temple, that last temple. And it's going to have sacrifices in it. But something's going to stop the sacrifices. What is that? Well, it is the abomination of desolation. That Antichrist is going to go in and say, I'm in God, worship me. And what's going to happen? Well, there's going to be a time of Jacob's trouble. Why? Because Israel's going to reject the Antichrist. And they are going to go through a period of persecution. During that time, God is going to bring his judgment, his condemnation, his wrath upon the nations. And that's going to end with two things. Israel being brought back to repentance and the kingdom of God being established in the return of Messiah. So I want you to see what it says here. It gives us a very important clue in verse 11. Let's read it again. From the time that the daily sacrifice is removed and the abomination of desolation is set up, how many days are there going to be? Well, remember, we talked about three and a half years, which is equal to 42 months, which is equal to 1,260 days. But here we have a change, not a mistake. It's to teach us something. It says here that there's going to be 1,290 days. Why is that important? An extra 30 days, shloshim. The term shloshim, which means 30 in Hebrew, is also the term shloshim can mean a mourning period. Now, what's going to happen? The scripture says in Zechariah that Messiah is going to return, that one who has been pierced, that Israel is going to look upon him and they're going to mourn like one mourns for their only child, a firstborn, which is 30 days. So this extension of 30 days has to do with a mourning period, but that's not the end. Why do I say that? Verse 12, blessed is the one who waits and arrives at 1,335 days. Why is that important? Well, that's an extension of 45 days. So we have two extensions, 30 days from 1,260 12, 12, to 1,290, 30, and then an additional 40 days to 1335. Altogether, 30 and 45, we're talking about an extension of 75 days. Why is that important? Because there is 75 days every year on the Jewish calendar between Yom Kippur and Hanukkah. Why are we talking about Yom Kippur? Because in the book of Zechariah, in the chapter immediately after when Messiah returns, when they'll look upon that one who is pierced, in chapter 13, and we learned this, there's going to be a fountain open up for impurity and, and that which is unclean. There's going to be a great day of immersion. And in Judaism, that great day of immersion leads into Yom Kippur. And therefore, there's going to be 75 days from Yom Kippur to what? Hanukkah. And then what's going to happen? The kingdom is established. So there's that, that connection between the establishment of the kingdom the revealing of Messiah and, and Hanukkah. Now let's turn to our last passage of Scripture. Look with me to the book of John, the book of John and chapter 10. Now it's a shame that so many people don't know that John chapter 10 speaks to Hanukkah. It's the feast of dedication. How do you say dedication in Hebrew? Hanukkah. What was dedicated? The temple. What's going to be dedicated? The temple for the millennial kingdom. When? On Hanukkah. They understood that the sages of old, those who lived and taught in the time of Messiah, they understood eight, it's a kingdom number. Messiah is going to turn, come at Passover. He did the first time. He's going to come 
and is related during the eight days of Sukkot and also the eight days of Hanukkah. All those three time periods, Passover, Sukkot, Feast of Tabernacles, and Hanukkah, they all have to do with a Messianic expectation. Why do I say that? Well, look now to John chapter 10 and verse 22. There it says, And it came about the Feast of Hanukkah, or the Feast of Dedication, the dedication of the temple. Now, let me just pause. And if you want to do some wise homework, you will go to a psalm, Psalm 30. Psalm 30 speaks about the dedication. David wrote that for the dedication of the temple. But Jewish tradition has not the first temple, not the second temple, but the kingdom temple. Why do I say that? Because if you read Psalm 30 carefully, there's one, two, three, four references to the resurrection, to everlasting life, to new life, to victory, to not ending in the pit, but being brought up to worship God forever and ever. So all of that is what Hanukkah is about. So we see here, look again at verse 22, John 10, verse 22. And it came about during the feast of Hanukkah, the dedication of the house of God in Jerusalem. It was winter time, so all the clues, so we know we're talking about the ninth month on the Jewish calendar, which usually corresponds with December. It says, and Yeshua was walking in the tabernacle, or the temple literally, and in a very specific place, in the place known as Shlomo's portico or Solomon's. Now what is Solomon's portico? It was the place that was closest to the Holy of Holies that someone who was not a priest or Levite could be. It was the place that was called Solomon's portico or Shlomo because he was the king. And it's related to the king. So Yeshua was there and it says that he was walking, but if you pay close attention, it uses the, the verb which is kind of reflexive and the better way to, to translate that would be he was pacing back and forth, back and forth. It was Hanukkah. There was a messianic expectation. Was Yeshua the Messiah? Well, notice what takes place. Verse 24. And the Jews, and when it says Jews, it doesn't mean Jewish people in general. That term in the book of John means the Jewish leaders, the leaders of Judea, those who ruled in the temple. It says, they came, they surrounded Yeshua, and they said to him, very natural question. It's Hanukkah. What's Hanukkah? There's a time, there's an expectation for Messiah to be revealed. How is he going to be revealed ultimately? Well, I can tell you how. He is going to come back and he is going to land on the Mount of Olives. He is going to come down the Mount of Olives. He is going to walk over the Kidron Valley. He is going to enter into the Eastern Gate and he's going to go into the Holy of Holies and take his seat upon the throne of God, which is on the Ark of God between the two cherubim. That's what Messiah is prophesied to do. That is the Jewish, the rabbinical expectation for the Messiah. And when is he supposed to come? Well, Passover or Sukkot or Hanukkah. So now it's Hanukkah. Messiah has been teaching. He's been teaching about the light of the world. He's been teaching about the kingdom. And there's much suspicion. Is he the one? Is this Yeshua? Is he really the Messiah? So now what happens? It's the time for Messiah's revelation from a kingdom point of view. It's Hanukkah, and there he is in the place of the king in Solomon's portico, walking back and forth. And what happens? The religious leaders, they come to him, they surround him, and they say, how long do you seize our souls? Meaning, how long do you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, show us plainly. What do they mean? Well, remember the expectation. During Hanukkah, Messiah is supposed to go into the Holy of Holies and sit upon the throne of God, the Ark of the Covenant. That's the manifestation of, of Messiah in the last days. That's the last sign to be assured who he is. So they're saying to him, if you're the Messiah, do just that. Well, we know something. He came and he manifested himself as the Redeemer on Passover. That's his first coming. But I assure you, when he returns, no one knows the day or the hour. But we're not talking about the rapture here. No, John chapter 10, 
beginning with verse 22, is talking about the second coming. And we know that the second coming, he'll be on time. He comes at the end of the seven years. After those final three and a half years, after those final 42 months, after those 1,260 days, he will return and there will be mourning for 30 days. And then there will be preparation just like there was after the defeat of Greece, by the way. In the book of Daniel, we find that the Antichrist kingdom is called the kingdom of Greece, by the way. So after Antiochus Epiphanes was destroyed, what happens? They prepared the temple for a period of time, and then they dedicated. What's going to happen? After Messiah returns, after they mourn him for 30 days, there's going to be an additional 45 days. Blessed are those who wait. And at the end of that period, 1,335 days, Messiah is going to do something. He is going to enter into the temple area in the way that only Messiah can do. He is going to go through that eastern gate. He is going to go into the Holy of Holies. He's going to take his throne and he is going to inaugurate the kingdom. And by the way, the term Hanukkah means just that, to inaugurate. He is going to inaugurate the kingdom. When? Well, the expectation is on Hanukkah. So this festival, it is not something to be ignored. It is not something just for Jewish individuals. It is for people who have a proper understanding of who Messiah is, what He has done in laying down His life, shedding His blood upon that cross, and what He's going to do when He returns from the heaven right on time. And He enters into Jerusalem, that holy city, and eventually makes His way on Hanukkah into the Holy of Holies so the kingdom will begin. Well, I'm out of time until next week when we return to our study to Revelation and chapter 12. Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel.